Over, over the years, going all the way back to ancient times, uh, people and wars have been memorialized. You, know, you see the e ancient Egyptians, the, the Greeks, the Romans, and those memorials tended to be on a more national level, you know, it was to the great generals and all. It wasn't until the Revolutionary War and in in its aftermath here in this country that people started to try to memorialize individuals that served. And you'll see that more and more as, as the years progressed to the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, and so on. So as part of this programming, we thought it would be great for Jim Streeter to talk about the war memorials here in Groton, because there's so many that I learned about from him that I just didn't realize existed. And I, I think a lot of people will find that true also, just drive down a road and you're keeping your eyes ahead of you. You don't necessarily notice that little um, stone over to the side or you pass a ball field and it's got a name on it. And there's a reason for that to have a name on it. So without further ado, I am pleased to introduce Jim Streeter. Before we get started though, I do want to make one announcement. I got a call yesterday uh, from a historian that uh, she reminded me of something, and I don't recall this. Uh, I'm sure the folks from Mystic will. Uh, back in September of 2014, they opened a time capsule at the Bill Memorial Library. And what it was was the, the founder of the Groton's DAR, uh, Abby Day Slocum, uh, had moved to uh, Europe and she was quite concerned about World War I at the time. And she had cut newspaper clippings or taken newspapers and about the war, World War I, and uh, put them into a time capsule and with the stipulation and sent them back to Groton with the stipulation they would not open them up for 100 years. So in September, in fact, September 6th, the anniversary of the uh, Battle of Fort Grizzle, they opened the, the uh, capsule up. They're still scanning and cataloging. And now, I always look at a time capsule about like this. My understanding, this is like two foot by two foot by two foot. Uh, so there's a lot of information in there. And the uh, DAR, and I believe Mystic uh, Historical uh, Group, are planning to do some type of a virtual display of, of, of these items, uh, probably this spring. So I wanted to make that announcement. So these things will be continue to go and just to, like the war continued to go. Uh, that's what happened there. Mike asked me to give this presentation. I felt, at first I felt a little uncomfortable with it because we're talking World War I. Uh, there are some monuments and memorials for World War I in Groton, but a few. Uh, so, but I, I said, no, it's important that we not only think about World War I, but the other veterans uh, of Groton as well as the United States that have participated in um, the wars. These are the act, this is one of the reasons why we have monuments. And there's veteran memorials and war memorials. And it's just like we have Veterans Day and we have Memorial Day. Memorial Day is to remember those that lost their lives. Veterans Day is to uh, re pay homage to everyone that, that's a veteran of that. So that's one of the reasons for having these monuments. Now, interestingly, this is what I have discovered. We have close to 70, if not more, war and veteran memorials uh, between the Thames River and the Mystic River. At first, I. I wanted to put a little booklet together uh, for Memorial Day or for Veterans Day and to take the proceeds of that booklet, sell the booklet, and uh, uh, pr provide the, the proceeds to the uh, Wounded Warriors or another veterans organization. And I said, well, geez, why don't I do all of New London County? <laughs> and then I found this and I said, no, I think we'll limit it to the, to the area between the Mystic River and the, and the Thames River. Now these are the various types of, of veteran memorials that we have throughout Groton. And you think of it and you say, wow. Uh, but there are, there's, there's a various ways to recognize our veterans. And these are most of them that we have. And I'm sure uh, every day I'm finding more. 
uh, and I'll explain that on a couple of slides that I have in the program, where we're finding these. Now, these are a few of the World War I memorials that we have. Now, remember, or you'll, you'll, you'll realize, a lot of these are obscure. Uh, I know until I started doing the research, I didn't know these things existed, but they do, and uh, hopefully by my pointing them out, and the booklet will give people the recognition, the people that deserve the recognition, uh, the opportunity to go out and look at them and their families. Here's the first one. If you go in to pay your taxes at the town hall, you go in the side door and you go upstairs to pay your taxes or you go to the right to, to the town clerk's uh, office. As you go in that door, look to the right because this plaque is right there. And there's over 420 names listed on that plaque. Initially, if you're familiar with the old town hall facilities, the council chambers used to be downstairs, and that's where it was initially installed. And it was installed about 1938. I'm still doing some research to verify that information. Uh, and it was in that chamber. But the chambers ultimately became a, a county courthouse, and that's when it was removed and placed where it is now. So that's one of the World War uh, one uh, memorials that we have. It's a plaque, large plaque, by the way. I, I would guesstimate, I'm going to give you an estimate, it is probably four foot by five feet in size. Of course, again, you have 420 names listed on the, on the plaque. The next one is uh, in Mystic. As you're coming up from Mystic, uh, and you have, I believe it's uh, Library Street. Am I correct, Mike? Library Street, right at that fork there, past the, past the church, you'll see this in the bushes. And, and that's another, to me, shameful thing. A lot of these monuments are not being taken care of. And I think uh, years ago, we had our veterans groups were very active and they would take care of them. But unfortunately, the veterans groups are, are getting smaller and smaller and, and they're not taking care of this. But it, it is there. And you, if you're not, if you're not conscious of it, you'll, you'll miss it as you drive by. But there's the list of the mystic veterans for the war. Now, of course, we have Fort Grizzle. That's, as Mike said, at the revolu end of Revolutionary War, we started uh, having these uh, memorials erected. And of course, the main one is the Fort, uh, Fort Grizzle Monument. And that's when it was erected in 1885. And you'll notice there's no obliques on the top of that. Um, it used to be just a flat roof. And 100 years later, they added the uh, obelisk. I guess the, I call it oblique. It's an obelisk uh, on the top of that. But also there, if you go to the gate, there's, there's a plaque on the gate uh, for the defenders that fought there. You go up, you, you find these, and you said, I never knew that. I never saw that before. You go inside, and there's, there's two others. There's the spot. Uh, it's it got a little uh, iron fence around it where Colonel Ledger supposedly was, lost his life. And then on the, on the stone, on, as you're, there's a little tunnel inside the upper fort. You see this plaque, and that's where the major from, uh, from England, or the British, was killed. You see the monument up there? Uh, right in back of the monument, you see the Civil War monument. And I did a presentation, thanks to Mike, <laughs> a few years ago on this individual uh, that donated this. Incidentally, that, was, that monument at one time initially was supposed to be erected on School Street, down where the Submarine Veterans Hall is, because that's where Mr. Gray lived. And there was a controversy, and finally this, the state said, okay, we can, you can put it on our property. And the importance of that, I thought I had something on him. Uh, I do later. Could keep that in mind. <laughs> Also, next to the, the monument, 
is this monument. And that was erected, uh, initially it said the borough of Groton. And you can see that the words the city of Groton, successor to the borough of Groton. That was added later. And interestingly, that replaced another monument that was there. And I'm going to hold off on that one because there's a whole section on that. But, so you've got two things to remember now that I'm coming back to. One is Robert A. Gray, and two is this, this uh, particular monument here. Now, buildings and schools, that's what you see a lot of. And uh, Groton, like other facilities, they'll sit down and say, what are we going to name our new building? And here's one here, William Seeley School. And that's Mr. Seeley there. Uh, that was named in the 50s. And Mr. Seeley uh, was the first person killed uh, for World War II during the bombing of Pearl Harbor. He was killed in Pearl Harbor. And it, interestingly, I received a, uh, an email about two weeks ago, and, and I knew it anyway, uh, because I wrote an article on Mr. Seeley. His name is spelled two different ways. The correct way is S-E-E-L-Y. And when they did the school, as well as another plaque, they S-E-E-L-E-Y. And those had to be corrected. And, but I received a, an email that is a veteran group that's going to ask it to be changed. Well, it's already been changed, so I'll be in touch with those folks to ensure that it, it, it's, uh, it's properly spelled. And there's a question, well, what do we do because the town is considering selling the school and if it's raised, what do we do with the name? I don't know. Because you want things to live on. You want those uh, memorials to live on. I don't know what they'll do. This gentleman here, I went to high school with him. Uh, Johnny and I were, weren't the closest of friends, but we were friends during high school and he was killed in Vietnam. In fact, he was killed on July 4th uh, during his second tour. He had been injured in January uh, and went back and uh, unfortunately lost his life there. The new field house at the, uh, at the high school was named after Johnny Blunt, as well as another plaque that we'll talk about again, so now we have three things to remember. This is an obscured one. If, if you belong to the Groton Heights Baptist Church, it's not obscure. To me, it was. I never knew this. All right. I went to the church to research another memorial and discovered that they had named a chapel after Har Howard Robinson, who was also killed in Vietnam. So there's a, there's a chapel that's named after him. It's not a building, but it is inside of a, a building. So it's very important with that. Now, we have the Submarine Veterans Memorial. We, we all know where that is. It's down by the bridge approach. Uh, the U.S. Navy uh, submarine veterans of World War II established that. And it's dedicated to the, uh, sh their shipmates that died while serving on submarines during World War II. And believe me, there's like 70, 70 or 80 submarines that went down during World War II. That's the Flasher Memorial. That's what they first uh, had for their memorial. In fact, this memorial was initially installed at Nautilus Park up in Navy Housing. And there was a lot of vandalism to it, so the association moved it down to where its present location, which is on, on the turn at the, uh, Thames Street and Bridge Street, uh, right across the street from what used to be the old state police barracks. And they've done a wonderful job of taking care of that. Uh, the World War II veterans, although, are, are starting to dwindle in numbers. So the city of Groton has taken over the upkeep of that parklet. The Navy still, still has uh, personnel from the submarine base that will come down and scrape it and paint it and keep the, the uh, conning tower of the flasher uh, in good condition. And they have a wall of honor down there. We've all, well, most of you are very well aware of the Vietnam Wall in uh, Washington, D.C. Well, they have the uh, submarine wall of honor here at this location. 
if you look around, you'll see other memorials down there, and, and I want to sit with uh, the submarine veterans to make sure I have it correct when we, when we produce this booklet uh, to ensure that we are making the right comments. If you see, there's the black wall and the names of every submariner that lost his life during World War II is on that wall. It's quite impressive. On the outskirts of this parklet are granite stones with the name of each submarine that was lost during World War II. Now, we're going to talk about some of the obscure and little known monuments. I was, I, I go to the Groton Congregational Church so about three years ago, and maybe this might have started me doing this research. I'm sitting with my wife and I looked over at the stained glass window and there's this plaque underneath the window. And I said, what's that plaque for? Oh, so afterwards we go over and there you go. Um, so it's, it's dedicated to the church members before in World War I and World War II. It's only about maybe two foot by a foot and a half. But it's a, it's, it's a memorial. It's obscure. If you don't go to the church, you don't see it. Now, the Groton Heights Baptist Church, remember I said I was, we'll take care of one of those three things you have to remember. Uh, I was there because I wanted to look at a stained glass window. If you go down to that area, you have the old church, and then there's a new addition to the church. The stained glass window is between the two, and, and they built right onto that. If you go inside, they, they kept the stained glass framed off, so you can see it, but it's within glass. So there's glass on both sides. The only time you really can see it, I had to go back at night and turn the lights on. They have lights inside there to, to uh, pronounce that. But as you can see, there's the names of the veterans from World War II uh, that served from the church and died in the war. Uh, I mentioned the, uh, no, I didn't mention that. This isn't one of the ones you're supposed to remember. Fitch Middle School next to the town hall. If you walk in there, there's a, a plaque that was made, and this is one where the misspelling of Seeley's name was there. And they've corrected it. If you'll see at the bottom, it's been corrected. It had been washed out, ground out, and a new, new addition put on there. That's in the Fitch Middle School. I'm not sure, and I, I apologize, I'm not sure if they moved that up to the new high school, uh, but it does exist. And if, if they haven't, I'm going to recommend that they probably keep it where it is, especially if the town is going to uh, turn that, take over and use it for other facilities. It belongs there because that's, that's where William Seeley went to school. And I mentioned Johnny Blunt, the field house. Uh, again, I was in his class and we cel celebrated our 50th high school reunion a few years ago and we had some funds left over and it was our committee that put on the thing to do something for our classmates that had fought in uh, the wars as well as uh, Johnny Blunt and Drew Fiedler, two of our classmates that had been killed in, in Vietnam. Um, both of those were uh, sports people. Uh, Johnny Blunt played football and Drew Fiedler was a, an excellent swimmer uh, representing not only the school but Groton. So that plaque is now in the new high school. Okay, everybody's been down by the filtration plant down on Thames Street, and there's a nice little parklet, parklet there, and you'll see the, the, the millstone that's in the middle of it, and it's for prisoners of war from the Battle of Fort Griswold. That monument didn't go up until the 70s, and uh, the DAR uh, installed that in the parklet. And by the way, that, uh, a little side issue where that parklet is, because I'm doing some research for some people at Eastern Point, this was an area that was being considered for the borough or the city's beach. And it, you'll see what's next to it. Well, before they built the filtration plant, 
we had the sewer pipes that went out into the water and dumped the raw sewage. And that's where one of the areas was where they were considering to have the public beach. <laughs> now, baseball fields and parks. This is an interesting story. About a month ago, uh, I was contacted by the Parks and Recs Department and asked what I knew about Calvin Borough baseball field. And I said, I knew I used to play on it when I was growing up in Bequanic Bridge when I was in Little Lake, but I don't really have too much information on it. I said, let me, let me do some research and get back to you. Well, ultimately we find out, and the reason why, by the way, is that uh, uh, a young man had just been um, involved in a homicide and they wanted to name, rename the field after him because he played baseball uh, at high school. He was a good athlete in baseball at the high school. So I researched it. I contacted relatives of Mr. Burroughs. If you recall, across the street from Fitch Middle School, the town hall, up until about a year ago, there was a sheep farm with chickens, the Burroughs farm. So I contacted Warren Burroughs, who was the doctor that went, went into retirement. Now he's out of retirement. He's in Seattle. And I contacted him in Seattle. And he relayed to me that his grandmother had supposedly purchased the property to name after Calvin because Calvin was killed in Normandy. So now it became a veteran's park, a veteran's memorial. Uh, I have all the documentation on that. Uh, I've related to the, the town's park department as well as the town manager uh, for them to ultimately make the decision whether to maintain the name or to change the name. Uh, I didn't know this park as far as being a memorial. So I, as I say, as I go along with this research or not even doing research, just somebody calls you and asks you to do some research, you discover another memorial. And uh, interestingly, uh, I contacted, I was given the information of a gentleman who is 92 years old that lives in Hawaii with his daughter. And I contacted him and he said, oh yeah, I helped build that park. And he supplied me with a lot of information uh, to help me with my research. And ultimately he sent me three or four photographs of the park when it was being dedicated. Oh, uh, that was very helpful for the research purposes. Submarine base. We'll discuss it. That's the fourth thing. Well, we've gotten rid of one. This particular ball field, uh, the more recent one, I believe, no, this is the older one, was named uh, for, for a sailor. So when you have these named after a specific veteran, just like the ballpark, you have a memorial. So this ballpark was, was named for this uh, Jim French. The second ball field on there, uh, and I, I think this is the newer one, I'm not positive, uh, but it was Captain Cason Young. Uh, it was dedicated for him. If it's not this field, there's another field that they're about to dedicate, the new athletic field. Uh, when I took these pictures a few years ago, uh, they were trying to, and this is before his passing, they were trying to get a hold of Yogi Berra, the former Yankee. Uh, they were going to name the athletic field after Yogi Berra. Uh, they could never make contact with him, and unfortunately he's passed away. I'm not sure whether they would still name it after him. That's a, a Navy thing. I, 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 I was on the phone with the uh, public, uh, public Affairs Office this morning, and we're going to discuss some things like that. So we have baseball fields. You probably pass them 100 times when you're going past the base and never thought of it, but they're a memorial. And we have the different types of monuments. This is the one in Noank. And I'm going to discuss this one as well as the one at the borough. Uh, as well as another one that was in Noink after this. Um, this is in that triangle off of Route uh, 215, is it? This is where the Noink has a parade every year. It starts or ends at this particular. This is back to that Civil War monument. The monument on the left 
is a monument that was installed at the grave site of Mr. Robert A. Gray, who is on the right here, who is the only person from Groton that has won the or was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Although he has, in, where you see the flag and the photograph on the left, that's his gravestone. That's exactly where he's buried. They did build a special monument for him. Uh, there's another one, and I don't have the photographs. So I, I didn't include. I couldn't include all 70 of them in this program. You're probably looking at 32 to 35 of these monuments that we're, we're talking about. This one, this one is in the Colonel Ledger Cemetery. So he's the gentleman that provided the money and donated the Civil War monument that's up at Fort Griswold. And that's why I said I want to talk about him later. And this is the reason why, because uh, he did, uh, was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. And he served in the 21st Regiment, Connecticut Infantry Regiment which leads me to the next one, because I didn't realize this until I worked on a book with Carol Kimball. And that goes back a few years. In New London, at Williams Park, you'll have that monument over there. And now you see the 21st Regiment. The soldiers in the Civil War from Groton and the Mystic area served, most of them served in the 21st regiment and that's where the monument is is in new london so we have a groton monument or groton memorial part of groton in new london back to the fort griswold you see the spanish cannon that was taken off of a spanish ship and it was brought back and it was dedicated to the people from america that fought in the spanish american war by the way, uh, those cannonballs did, were not used for that gun. Those were cannonballs that were laying around the park, and they said it would look nice if we installed them at the bottom. This one here leads back to one of my favorite subjects. This is in memory of Captain William Latham from the Battle of Fort Griswold. And you will see it's donated by Morton F. Plant from the Avery Point Mansion. And I remember doing a story on this particular memorial. The children of the daughters of the American Revolution, so they call it the sons of the American Revolution, wanted to put together a water fountain for the workers at the Groton Iron Works where the electric boat company is. Mrs. Plant, Morton Plant's wife, was working with, because she was a daughter of the American Revolution, working with the children, and they were having trouble raising money. So she went home, and I'm sure she said, Morty, the children need some money to have it. <laughs> so it did indeed take place. But if you look at the bottom, that was his only stipulation. Oh, I'll pay for it. As long as you have water and troughs at the bottom of it for my horses that come down to my estate. So they, they received their monument, but there was a stipulation. That stood at the corner down by electric boat where the road splits by the main gate until the 70s. And now it's, it's located at the Groton Municipal Building. If you go into the city of Groton's Municipal Building area, look to the left on the on the grassy area, and you'll see that monument there. Doing a study on Noank, which will be my next subject, I discover that two streets were named after veterans in Noank. So you have the uh, Emden, Moser, and the Harrison M. Ward streets over there. Who would have known? Submarine base? <laughs> That's why I was on the phone this morning. First of all, they have a chapel on the Thames. That it was dedicated to the submariners. Inside, every bench is dedicated to one of the lost submarines. There are other, several other plaques in there. I, I, I have to go back and pay them a visit. That's why I called the public relations office today. There are also four windows in there that are dedicated I have to get better photographs and some more information on them. Um, 
And maybe you folks can help me with something. The Shepherd of the Sea Chapel that was up Kanji Wamp or whatever road it is that's closed and has just been sold. Right? My understanding that was dedicated also to a memorial of sorts. I'm, I'll find out one way or the other. Every street on the submarine base is also named at, for one of the lost submarines. So I was, I was, I apologize, I was wrong. There are 80 lost submarines. No, I'm sorry. There were 80 people lost on this submarine, and that's the date that it was lost. Every one of the uh, streets has the number lost and the date it was lost. I only have a few here. There are 21 buildings that are named after sailors and submariners at the submarine base. Now, there's significance to, to several of them. Seven of them were named for individuals or sailors that were awarded the Medal of Honor. I'm not sure of the other buildings, but if a building is named after someone who participated in a war or was in the military, it becomes a veteran or a war memorial. So I have to discover which, which 21 and try to take photographs of those. Now we have lost some memorials. Down where that Flasher Memorial is, there used to be a rotary. And I remember this. There was a cannon there. And it was a World War I memorial. A gentleman named John Koch was the one. It was a French cannon. And he petitioned the federal government to receive this. And they placed it at the park as a memorial to those who fought and lost their lives in World War I. I'm sorry about that photograph, but the photograph was about this big, and the cannon was over in here. And it's the best I could do as far as scanning it. Uh, it ultimately had wooden wheels on it. It rotted. The cannon itself was taken to the municipal building and stored in back of the municipal building for several years. I remember seeing it there. The Boy Scouts wanted to refurbish it, so it was turned over to a gentleman, I use that word loosely, uh, who took it and he did go down to Amish country and had two new wheels made for it and he put it together and restored it and then sold it for $10,000 and we no longer have it. Okay. Back to the Baptist church, no longer here. The Boy Scouts decided they would have a wall of honor for all of the troops that were in their Boy Scout troop, all of the Boy Scouts that were participating in the war. And they, this was sitting outside of the church for several years. And I've had a large uh, enlargement of it, and I've talked to several people who knew the people that were on that list, and there's a few that might still be around. Controversial, but it was a war memorial. And uh, it wasn't erected until 1880, 250 years after the war, the Indian War. And I love this picture, the next picture. It was removed to Meriden in 1995, and I have looked at it up there. I, I used to work in Meriden, so I looked at it. But this is a great, this John Mason laying down on the job. <laughs> uh, that was strapped down, that was for uh, being moved when it was being moved to, to uh, Meriden. That's no longer in Groton, but it is, it still does exist. And these are the ones that I wanted to talk about. Unfortunately, those are newspaper photographs. That's all I have. That's the best that we have. But they're important. The one on the left, the Groton, remember I mentioned the Borough of Groton monumental stone that's at the Fort Grizzle. This wall of honor was there first. And again, there was over 400 names on that wall of honor. I can't enhance that photograph any, any better than what it is there. It's gone. I just need to try to find a photograph of it. The next one is the one, a wall of honor that was in Noank. This is where the, the intersection for the other one is today. That was there. Uh, I've made contact with somebody in, 
in uh, Noink, and they have a smaller photograph of it. So we do have a picture of it, which we'll hopefully put into the book. If, if I have to, I'll put that one in the book. I, I'd rather not, because I want people to really see what it looked like. What is the largest memorial that we have? We the bridge. Aha! Very good. I like that, because most people will say, it's the Grot Monument. It's not. You're absolutely correct. It's the Gold Star Memorial Bridge. For those that are not aware, Gold Star is for anyone, for the families of anyone that lost their lives in war. And you have Blue Stars for those that are participating in war. So uh, during that period of time in World War II, you would drive by a house and if there was a Gold Star there, that meant they lost a family member in World War II. And if there's a Blue Star, they had somebody participating in the war during that time. When they did this, they did not do this when they first opened the bridge. When they first opened the bridge in uh, 40, 45, 46, it was the Groton New London Bridge. And then ultimately, about eight years later, 1952, uh, uh, they named it the Gold Star Bridge uh, for those in Waterford, New London, and Groton that lost their lives. Now, the plaque in the middle, when they opened the bridge, there was one of these monuments on either end of the bridge, on either side of the bridge. When they reconstructed to the twin bridges, Groton's monument disappeared. It's gone. Uh, now, I've written the Department of Transportation, as well as a few of our local senators and representatives who have contacted the governor's office to say, where is it? And they can't find it. But another interesting thing, on that bridge, on one of the cement uh, structures, uh, foundations, they have this, the Gold Star Bridge. And that was dedicated by the Navy and the Coast Guard. So we have a monument with two plaques. You know, and the, the other plaque that I had in the middle of the last slide, that's located in New London and it's under an underpass over there, you can not let you look and you wouldn't know it. Now, this is our pride and joy. Uh, when you leave here, you walk out the front door, it's directly in front of you. It's our Groton Veterans Memorial Park. In the center of it is a sundial on top of that dome, and every branch of service insignia is on that dome. We have panels that are eight foot by four foot by a foot deep. This one just thanking all of those from Groton that are veterans of war. We have a panel for World War I, World War II to recognize those folks. We have a panel for Korea and Vietnam. And then we have a panel that lists the 67 casualties from Groton from all wars, with the exception of the Revolutionary War. Then we had the newest, newest initiative we took back in 2012. We recognized that we had people coming back from Afghanistan, Iraq, and Persian Gulf conflicts and wars, and we had nothing to recognize them. So we took the initiative uh, and asked the town to uh, contribute to that. Unfortunately, the town was broke, so we started our own ad hoc committee, and uh, we now have a monument, a panel recognizing those veterans. Enable to, to enable us to raise monies for this, as well as some other upkeeps to the park, we have started a Veterans Recognition Plaza. You see the small square down below. It looks small. We have a lot of blank blocks in there, but we also have uh, about 160, and we've got a backlog of another 15 or so, where we recognize the veterans. And the proceeds from the sale of those blocks is what contributed to purchasing that wall and also the other upkeeps to which we're, we're installing five flag poles. They're installed 
just recently, where we will fly the flag of each branch of the service there. We will put low ball, low boy lights around so it's lit at night. Uh, and we will have an endowment so we can replace the flags and have the appropriate flowers and wreaths uh, placed there during the thing. Um, if anyone is interested, and yes, I'm selling these because it's an important venture, uh, we will have these application forms out, out front on the table. I want you to just think about that. Because we do, we owe them a lot of gratitude. Thank you.